so good morning everyone uh, in some of our last classes we have been discussing about this convolution technique so today we will be looking into what is the mechanics behind uh, this convolution okay and after understanding the mechanics we will go into the uh, this mathematical uh, uh, equation based uh, representation how the convolution are being represented okay so the first method it is the sliding tape method sliding tape method okay so before going into this why convolution is important we have already discussed but uh, just in brief i would like to just uh, tell you so if we have an lti system and i hope all of you by now know what is an lti system okay <clears throat> so if we give an input to an lti system which is having an what is this hn impulse response okay so if we have xn which is the input signal and we give it as an input to the uh, to, a, uh, to an lti system having an impulse response of hn then our output yn it is given by x convolution of h of l okay it can also be represented in the form of h of n convolution of x of n so this means this convolution it follows the commutative property Okay. The importance of convolution is in understanding how we can get the output of the system if the input and the impulse response of the system is known to you. Okay. So, what is an impulse response? Anyone? What is an impulse response? भैया जी इतना ब्लैंक होने से कैसे चलेगा तो ना व्हाट इज एन इंपल्स रिस्पॉन्स व्हाट इज इंपल्स रिस्पॉन्स नहीं पता Yes, Shashi. Don't know what is an impulse response? Domain. What do you know? Ah, uh, so. that is not impulse response that is direct function yes tanvir madam ratul ratul na hmm hmm impulse response in balaji ki tarah lagi ye ratul ke bagal mein hai discuss this in details dekho kya haal hai aap logo ka so if you have a system okay so 
if we give an input of delta n the output what we get it is called impulse response so why delta n because it is an impulse input where at n equals to 0 there is an impulse and after that we will be having consequent values of 0 so that means at a particular instance we are giving an impulse input and in response whatever the output we are getting that is called impulse to response okay <clears throat> so here in so we get the output yn if we know the impulse response because impulse response it is the characteristics of the system it will never change okay so for a, an lti system what we will be having if we know the impulse response of the system and if we know what input we will be giving so by this mathematical operation of the convolution we can predict what would be the yn okay we can predict what would be the yn okay now let us take Uh, an example so we have xn it is equal to 1 2 3 4 4 5 and we have hn 1 to 1 okay so let us consider that the origin is at the first points in both the cases okay so how do we find out the output of the system the output of the system it would be given by y n equals to x n convolution of h n or h n convolution of x n so we will basically use the first one that is the x n convolution of h n for performing all our operations however in the exam if you do the uh, you use the uh, next one the that is the next equation that is the h n convolution of x n that would also be correct okay it depends upon you but usually uh, when we talk about the uh, output of the system we in general we uh, tell about that it is x n convolution of h n so using that uh, what you call generic or the generalized uh, equation i will be moving forward okay so when we talk about this x n convolution of h n or whatever number a n convolution of b n whatever is your second signal component in our case it is the h n component we would first have to find out the inverse of the component okay so in this case we have h n so it will be h of minus n so there would we will calculate the time inverse h n okay time inverse h n right so time inverse h n across this origin we will flip the signal so if you see 1 to 1 this remains as the origin now how does the calculation uh, how do we do the calculation the <coughs> over here what we have to do is that if you see here initially i have written xn values okay then i will write the hn values uh, h of minus n values such that the origin of xn and origin of h of minus n it matches okay origin of xn and origin of minus of hn it matches okay so next what we will do the multiplication and then addition of this one so it would be 0 plus 1 or uh, 0 multiplied by 1 0 plus the second one 0 multiplied by 2 0 plus 1 multiplied by 1 1 2 two multiplied by 0 0 Plus three multiplied by zero, zero plus 
4 multiplied by 0, 0. So, this is our, what we are getting? We are getting 1. Now, since we have this origin matched over here, so what happens? The output, what we would be getting? It would be y0. Okay. The output, what we would be getting? It is y0. Okay. Next, for y1, what we should be getting? What we will be doing is that we will be moving the h of minus n origin one step to the right. Okay. When we move it one step to the right, we will be getting y of 1 and now if you see 1 multiplied by 0, it would be 0, 2 multiplied by 1, 2, 2 multiplied by 1, 2, so and rest are again 0, so we get 4. Uh -huh. Where? Huh, so we told them uh, this y should be equal to y1. When uh, you are matching the origin, when both the origins are being matched, then you are calculating the value of y0. Okay. So, when you are moving it one step to the right, then it is y of 1. Okay. And if you have to calculate some value by moving the h of minus n to the left, then one step means h of minus 1, two step means h of minus 2. Similarly, if you move this lower component to the right hand side, one step movement, it corresponds to y of 1, two step movement, it corresponds to y of 2, y of 2, then three steps, y of 3 and so on. On the right hand side, we will be calculating positive values of n and on the left hand side, we will be calculating the negative values of the output. Okay? And when both the origins are matched, that is the origin of the output. Okay? So, similarly, if we have to calculate y2, what I told, we have to move to the right. Okay? So, if you move to the right, then this should be there, 3 multiplied by 1, 3, 2 multiplied by 2, 4, 1 multiplied by 1, 1. So, we get 8. Now, if it is uh, say y of 3, Four multiplied by one, four, three multiplied by one, uh, sorry, uh, three multiplied by two, six, two multiplied by one, two, one multiplied by zero. That would be zero, so we get twelve. Similarly, we can find out y four, y five. So y four it comes out to be eleven, and four is the last one. Okay. Now, the y in over here, it would be given by 1, 4, 8, 12, 11, 4. Okay? So, what is y0? y0 is this one. So, it starts with um, over here. And uh, y haven't uh, gone to the left. If you see, if I move this 1 to 1 to the left, then everything is 0. So, I have not calculated it. Okay? So, we got this y in like this. And we know from here y0 is uh, this one and we can uh, put the pivot just beyond, uh, beneath that. Even if we do not put the pivot in this case, because as I told, if the pivot has to be put into the first case, even if you do not put, it is understood that the pivot is at the first place. Okay? However, if the origin is at the second place or third place, in those cases, it becomes mandatory to put the pivot. Okay. Now, <coughs> say for example, if I have to find out the length of this system, how do you and how do I find out the length of the system? Okay. How do I find out the length of the system?
बोलो सो द लेंथ ऑफ द लेंथ ऑफ द सिस्टम नहीं सॉरी लेंथ ऑफ द आउटपुट द लेंथ ऑफ द आउटपुट इट वुड बी गिवन बाय लेंथ ऑफ द एक्सएन प्लस लेंथ ऑफ द एचएन माइनस वन ओके so length of x length of h minus 1 so length of x is 4 length of h is 3 and output would be given by length of x plus length of h minus 1 which comes out to be 6 okay so if you see the length of yn what is it 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay now suppose how do i know suppose you are given this outputs and all these things that uh, you are given x and you are given hn and you are given the output and you have you have been asked where will be the pivot okay that means where will be your origin if you have to calculate that how will you calculate it's pretty simple you will first go to the hn uh, xn you will see after the origin values how many numbers are there okay so we are having 1 2 3 after the uh, after the origin of hn how many subsequent numbers are there we are having 2 so this comes out to be 3 plus 2 5 so while calculating the yn we have to calculate five units 1 2 3 4 5 5 5 5 will be putting the pivot okay so after the origin on the right hand side how many numbers are there or how many sequences are there you have to calculate the what do you call it? how many numbers you are getting in hn and xn and then after the addition of that whatever is the output from the right hand side you will start counting towards the left and after that addition in sum whatever you will be getting after the next point would be your origin next point on the left hand side it would be your origin okay now <coughs> you would say why i should uh, believe you sir uh, that is justified let us take this example where i have moved this pivot to the second point okay so initially the pivot was on the first point at 1 however now i have moved it to 2 okay so i have moved it to 2 so again if you see i have calculated hn now if you see y0 now it is 4 8 12 11 4 then if you move it to the left hand side from the origin position this is your origin position okay so where the origins are being matching so if i move it to the left i will be getting y of minus 1 equal to 1 right another movement to the left it will result in zero so i have not calculated so yn is equal to 1 4 8 12 11 4 and from here since we are matching and then we are calculating it so we know that this point is our origin however if you look now uh, if you have to blind if i give you the output and if you give you the xn and the hn and i ask you to put the pivot what you have to do again let's see 1 2 then say 3 4 after four points we will be putting the pivot 1 2 3 4 after four points we are putting uh, putting the pivot okay so that is our uh, this thing so this is what it has been shown over here n of x plus n of h it is equal to 4 so it uh, after four points we will be putting the pivot so that would be your origin so why i have told this you may ask sir uh, we already know we are because we are calculating y0 and all this uh, 
uh, values. So why we need to know uh, where the pivot needs to be put? This is because in the next method, in the tabulation method, where we use linear con uh, convolution method for the calculation. So linear convolution by the tabulation method, when we use this, uh, we don't have any idea where to put the um, pivot. Okay. So we just have to do the convolution. So in this method, as the name suggests, tabulation, we need to tabulate the values. So in the y column, we will be having h of n, 1 to 1. In the row xn, we will be having 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So this xn, it is coming on the top and this hn, it is coming to, on the column. Okay, one to one. So left to right, left to right. Now what to do? Just using one multiplied by one, one, one multiplied by two, two, one multiplied by three, three, one multiplied by four, four. Just you have to do the multiplication. Then two multiplied by one, two, two multiplied by two, four, then two multiplied by three, six, two multiplied by four, eight. And similarly we get uh, this um, multiplier is 1, so we will put 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. Now, next one, we will be getting, uh, making this diagonal lines. Okay. So, 1, it comes over here, then in the next, a diagonal system we have 2 plus 2, 4. So it comes over here. The next one 3 plus 4, 7 plus 1, 8. It comes over here. 10, 12. It comes over here. 11 comes over here. And 4, it comes over here. Now, in this case, where will you put your origin? Where will we be putting the pivot? You don't know. So, under that circumstances, the calculation, what I have told you over here, where to put the pivot, it comes into here. Okay. Because over here, if you say the pivot is at 2 or somewhere else, how do you find out from here? It is not possible. You are just getting the outputs in the, uh, uh, what do you call, in a particular manner. If both the pivots are at the first point, that means at n equal to 0, then there is no problem. However, if one of the pivot is, uh, uh, say, it is not at uh, n equal to 0 index, then there comes the problem. How do you calculate? So, from, from the method which I have discussed in the previous slide, from there you have to calculate where you will be placing the pivot in the output. Okay? Now, there is another convolution which is regarded as circular convolution. Okay, which is regarded as circular convolution. So, what happens? So, you have to keep in mind in circular convolution, the size of both the signals, in our case, the Xn and Hn, they should be equal. Okay, the size of both the signals for which you are trying to find out the convolution sum, they should be equal. Okay. So, if you see, in Xn we are having 1, 2, 3, 4. In Hn we are having 1, 2, 1. So, in Xn we are having 4 components. In Hn we are having 3 components. So, to make both the same, we cannot reduce one number from Xn. So, what we have to do? We can pad a 0 at the end in the Hn to make it 4. So, we can make it to 1, 2, 1, 0. Now, the length of Hn and length of Xn both are same. Okay. Now, if you see, I will just put 1, 2, 3, 4 in the column wise manner. 1, 2, 3, 4. Next, what I would do? I would take the first number. I will diagonally move it down and then this one, it comes over here. In the next stage,
it comes up. In the next stage, it comes up. Okay. So, in every step, you are moving the first element down. Okay. One step down. Now, whether you are whatever the matrix you have made for the circular convolution is it okay or not how do you know you have to check for this diagonal value okay all of these diagonal values they should be having same number as that of your the first element of your signal Okay, so it is we are having row by column of four by four, and if you see the HN, we are having row by column four by one. So, what should be our matrix size? It should be four by one. So, you do the calculation. I hope uh, every one of you know how to do the calculation. One. Multiplied by one, one, four plus four multiplied by two, eight, three multiplied by one, three, okay, and two multiplied by zero, it comes out to zero, so it is twelve, eight, eight, twelve. So this is the basis of your circular convolution. Now, if you see, when we perform the circular convolution, our y n it is not having the same sequence as that of the convolution or the output what we would have been expecting. So, this is one of the major problem of the circular convolution. So, there is a uh, what what you call there is a hack. To manipulate the circular convolution so that we get the output of a system, because when we calculate the output of a system, we perform linear convolution. Okay, we perform linear convolution. So we can implement linear convolution by circular convolution. Now, how it is possible? If we have x n. And if we have no HN, we can find out what should be the length of the output signal, right? We already discussed four plus three minus one six, right? What is for length of the input signal? Uh, three, length of the impulse response, right? So four plus three minus one equals to six, right? So we know that we are having. We know that our output signal will be having six elements. Okay. Now, what to do? Make both the signal components into a six-length signal component. How to do? Again. Pad of fifth zero. So if you see the first column, one, two, three, four, we have padded two extra zeros. In this one, if you see one, two, one, then again three extra zeros have been padded. Now you perform the circular convolution, the same thing. It moves over here. And in this way, you perform it, and you get the output over here. Now again, where will you put the origin? Again, we have to go back to the first slide. Today's first slide, and from there we need to calculate. And in this case, um, we know the pivot would be at the first position. Okay.
now we come to the mathematical equation now we have understood what is happening in the convolution now we need to get into the mathematical equation uh, which is called the convolution sum equation okay so the equation is this one okay equation is this one so y of n it is equal to summation of m equals to minus infinity to infinity x of m multiplied of h of n minus n okay y n equals to summation of m equals to minus infinity to infinity x of m h of n minus n now the thing arises over here we have two variables m and n okay we are having two variables m and n so let us see how this m variable it needs to be calculated okay so here in ml means m low value what it would be it would be x of low okay what is it if you see i have calculated n equals to minus 1 0 1 2 1, because my origin is at 2 right so this is minus 1 so whatever is the unit of n lowest unit of n in the case of x that is your ml okay where the ml would be put see m value it varies from minus infinity to infinity we cannot handle mm, uh, this uh, for processing of the digital signals infinity components so we have to define the limits how do we define the lower limit lower limit is the lower time limit of your xn okay of your xn so in this case this lower limit it would be minus of 1 and mh that means the m high value if you see the nth index is 2 so this infinity should be replaced with this 2 right so we know that our m value it will vary in the region of minus 1 to 2 okay we have found out this thing okay now we have to find out the other variable n you have to find out the other variable n what would be the length of this one or the limit of the n in what range we will be varying the n okay m value you have understood m value it just comes from the value n value of xn cap small n m for monkey that value it comes this monkey h or uh, monkey l and monkey h it comes from the value of xl and xh okay n value of x sigma what about n n value it would be coming from both xn and xh uh, no, sorry hn xn and hn so nl lower value it would be x of l plus h of l so x of l is minus 1 h of l it is 0 so n of l it will be minus 1 x of l h of l what whatever would be the nth index of lowest nth index of the xln hn it would be 
there. The next is n of h high value. How will you calculate? X of h plus h of h. X of h is two. H of h is two. Two plus two, four. Okay. So our n value it would vary from minus one to four. Minus one to four. Okay. So we know these two limits because if you see in this equation, there are two vari variables. So we know the limits of both m and n, and in what fashion we need to change. Okay. So let us rewrite this equation over here by putting the m values. So y of n equals to Two uh, m equals to minus one to two x of m multiplied by h of n minus m. So we need to uh, vary the zero values over here. So that means y zero, y one, y two. We have to calculate. So we know that the lowest n value it would be minus one. So we will put y of minus one. It would be equal to summation of m equals to minus one to two. X of m, h of minus one, minus m. Right? We have just put the value of n over here. Okay. So if you break it out, x of minus one multiplied by h of क्या होगा? Minus one plus one हो जाएगा. So minus one plus one it would be h of zero. Right plus m equals to zero, x of zero multiplied by h of minus one plus x of one, h of minus two plus x two, h of minus three. You are getting my point. So how much you are getting? We are getting value of one. If you see and compare it with the sliding tape method, this was the origin. This is the origin. One multiplied by one, one. Okay, we have got this one. Then two multiplied by zero, one multiplied by zero, and the rest of the things are also zero. So we have got one. When y equals to zero, what we are getting? One multiplied by two. Two multiplied by one, then rest are zero. We get four. So you compare this upper scale and over here. So two multiplied by one, two, two multiplied by one, two, and rest are zero. So we get four. You getting my point? Similarly, y equals to one. We move it one step further. One multiplied by one, one. Two multiplied by two, two. Uh, four plus three multiplied by one, three. So it would be eight. See, we are getting eight. Okay. So in this way, now you can correlate how the things are unfolding. Okay. so i will stop over here so i would request you to go through this uh, uh, points over here whatever we are uh, this y1 y2 y3 y4 can calculate those and then if you have any problem we can discuss